Hi there, this is part one of a new uh, art garment project I'm starting work on today. Um, Catherine, my customer, uh, she wants a dress representing fire. So she's given me a stack of red, orange um, coloured fabrics and I'm going to be patching some of those together, these kind of things. To work into her garment and I'm also at the moment looking at creating a stencil to to use to print over the textiles the stencil is going to be a tree and I'm creating it because I'm not too concerned about it being a permanent stencil I'll probably only use it a number of times and then dispose of it I'm making it on this heavy, heavy brown paper. One side of this paper is a little bit shiny and the other side is more matte. So I'm actually drawing this on the matte side. And I'm going to just make a shape like a tree and branches. And I'm going to literally cut this out with scissors. So I'm not going to use a blade which tends to be a bit more time consuming. And then I'm going to give it a quick spray with the varnish to make it a little bit more waterproof. And then once I've made a patch together some of Catherine's textiles, I'm going to use this to print. So I'm going to shut this down at the moment and come back in a little while to show you the finished result and where I go to next. I've patched together some of the fabrics Kathleen's given me, Catherine rather, to make her dress with. They're all cottons. There's uh, some knits and some different fabrics here, but they're all cotton. So I'm going to use this leaf print, which I've cut in another video, and then in a, I'm going to overprint over this with the big print that I just cut a while ago. Water spray there. Right. So just working in my usual fashion, intuitively, no particular uh, forethought to where I was going to lay these up. I'm using a fluoro red colour. 
Catherine's pretty comfortable with lots of really bright colour. She said I was free to use the fluoros, which delights me a great deal because I really like bright colour. This piece of fabric is uh, approximately about 1.4 square. It's going to be enough for me to cut the bodices and sleeves of the dress. I'm going to use my sky blue dress pattern. I'm not. I'm going to cut the, the bodice from sky blue. At this stage, I may or may not use the skirt pattern I'm not too sure we'll see how we go okay this is getting a bit tedious so I'm going to pause here and come back in a little while when I'm ready to do the big print hi there I've done all the leaf prints, which wasn't a lot. I can always apply some more later. And I've laid up this stencil you saw me cutting a while ago, the branches on the fabric. It's a very fragile stencil. You'll get to observe exactly what I mean by that when I lift it in a little while to move it along to do another print. You can see how pieces of it are lifting even as I'm printing now. This is what I mean about fragile. It's very unstable. That's okay with me. I'm not even sure how successful this is going to be. As an artist, I take a lot of risks. I could potentially ruin my client's fabric. But I am also pretty confident that if I were to do that, I can fix it again. I can make it right, make it work. Uh, I'm not working to a formula. That's part of the way I work as an artist. I do things a lot of the time very intuitively, in quite a risky way. Sometimes, of course, I fail and my ideas or my experiments don't work out but I have ways of making them work so there you go here I am with my fragile unstable stencil which took me at least half an hour to cut out and I'm trying to get an impression of those branches on this fabric Okay, so now that I'm going to move it in a moment, you'll understand what I mean about this being fragile. You can see how a lot of that is curling up there. This means when I move it, I'm going to have quite a challenge to flatten it out again. Pretty happy with that print. It looks like a burning tree, which is what I was hoping for. So now I'm going to gauge where I want the next print. Now this is curling really radically. Okay, so what I'm thinking is perhaps it would be better if I worked it from the opposite direction to the way it's curling. which is why I'm laying it up this away and we'll see what happens when I run the roller over it and we'll find out 
what marks we get on the fabric. Okay, uh-huh, so I'm trying to sort of uh, flatten out the worst of the curling. <laughs> like I said, I am pretty comfortable with working in a highly uh, disorganized way, perhaps is the best way of putting it. Let's see, go this way. I was right about working it from this direction. It was a it was a good choice. If I had tried to uh, use the roller rolling towards the way the paper was curling, I think I would have had a considerably less pleasing result. Uh huh. My paint's getting a little stiff. I I'm really sorry about my video flickering a lot. I've got no idea why I have this problem. I've been trying to uh, problem solve it for months, and because of that, because I'm sure it must be very annoying, I'm going to shut this video down now and come back in a while. 